One of the questions that I will ask you often is, what does that line of code do? Or what does it say? And there's an amazing frequency that people will say, I don't know. And then I'll say, well, can you read it? And they'll say, no, I don't know how to read it. Um, that's kind of amazing because you can all read um, and you can all just say the word of what it says. The difficulty that people have is that they think that there's some magic to reading code. Um, if you can't guess what that code will do, it doesn't mean that you can't read the code. And often reading the code out loud will be very helpful. So the reading code is a real skill. It's much, much more important than being able to write code. So read the line of code, the first thing you do, um, even if it's just out loud, it's like print four plus seven. Oh, okay, what does that do? Like, well, I think it'll print four plus seven. And you're like, okay, well, my guess is it'll print the characters four plus seven. And then you run the line using the debugger and then you update your worldview. So, well, what does that mean? So maybe it doesn't print four plus seven, maybe it prints 11. And so if it prints 11, you have to think, well, why is that? And you go, oh, well, it evaluates that value before it prints it. So that works nicely. But then we've got this magic of the debugger gives us an environment to work in. So if you need to write some code that comes after the code you've just written, you can stop the point, uh, you stop the execution where you want, and then you can mess about in the debug console. And we'll demo that a bit more, but it's super useful. So just keep that in mind when you're trying to write some code. And you can write comments as well. So comments are just any line that starts with a hash. And you'll see plenty of comments from me, so you just have to kind of pick that up as a habit. And then this asking questions thing is super useful. We've already had it a few week, few times this week where I've had people say, Ben, I have a problem. And I'm like, well, so? I have lots of problems. I don't come and bother you about them. So what we need you to do is say, I have a problem. This is what the problem is. This is what I've tried. And so there's an error message that will come out. Copy and paste that into Google. And more often than not, there's an answer there. A large proportion of work as a programmer is Googling error messages. Um, but if that didn't work, call someone over to help you. Don't just sit there being stuck. But do some work before you do that. Don't just be like, I'm stuck. And then try and get that someone to help you get them to come and say okay this is my problem this is what I've tried this is what I searched for I didn't understand what they said I tried this it didn't work I tried this it didn't work and that works incredibly powerfully as a way of solving your own problem is preparing to get someone else to solve it um, so being able to solve your own problems is the difference between someone who's a real programmer and someone who isn't basically so get into it as a habit there is an email template and a uh, a question template essentially in the course repo if you want to have a look at that it's super helpful if you fill that in before you send a message because otherwise my life is just filled up with people saying i have a problem and me saying okay and then them saying can you help me and i say I don't know what's the problem and so on and so on. So if you see the um, question asking template, then we can be much more likely to actually help you out there. So once you've done that three step process of trying to pull it apart, look for answers, implement an answer, see why you're still wrong, blah, 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 blah. Keep going around in that circle. Eventually you'll get to the point where you understand what's going on, but it also helps us understand what we can explain a bit more carefully. Okay?